Tracy here, Kansas Garb Guy Summer Pick Farms. How are you guys doing today? Well, as you can see, it's a little different today. I'm actually inside our living room, sitting down enjoying me a cup of coffee, uh, looking through my seed catalogs, and I decided, hey, you know what? I've kind of got this thing going on this week where earlier in the week, hopefully you guys watched my earlier video this week, where we actually did seed starting trays, the difference between a bootstrap farmer tray versus the homegrown Amazon slash box store kind of style trays. So hopefully you guys watched that and enjoyed it. If not, please check that out. Um, today I'd like to talk about seed propagation. Um, what we do here to uh, for our seed propagation and how um, what grow lights I use, what kind of racking I use, anything like that. Any kind of questions like that. If you guys do have any questions, make sure you leave the comments below. I do read and see every comment that comes across and I try to answer them as soon as I see them. Um, <clears throat> So let's get started. There's a million videos out on YouTube right now, or you could Google a million different things and get five million different answers. You know, it's like everything else here. Um, everybody seems to be an expert or think what works for them should work for everybody else. I'm not like that. This is what works for us. It's in the last five or six years, I've been prob or slowly progressing to where I'm at right now to try to tighten up. Uh, my growing needs, it makes it easier on me um, during the day by myself to get seeds propagated, to get seeds or seedlings planted in the ground to get the to get what I need done. So I've kind of slowly worked towards that way. And it's gonna be the same way for you. You're not but by far you can you can I mean it's gardening. You're gonna fail, you're gonna succeed, just do it. That's all you have to do is just get in there, uh, work hard, and I promise you it will work for you. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank all the new subscribers we've gotten in the last couple weeks. We've got a ton of new subscribers to our channel. So thank you so much. I appreciate you guys finding us here and following us on our journey, which will in turn be your journey. Um, hopefully you guys stick around to see what happens this year. Um, we're going to hit it really hard this year. We've got a lot of goals this year. I don't know if I'm going to meet them, but I sure in the hell I'm going to try. Um, so let's start this video off with what I do to store my seeds. Um... By no means, is like I said, all this stuff is the correct way of doing it and not correct. This is just how we do it here. We started years ago this way, right here. Shoebox. Um, very great way of storing seeds. Um, it's just we outgrew this method without getting multiple and multiple shoeboxes. We started getting four and five shoeboxes of stuff, and then I decided, hey, we need to come up with something different. Um, shoeboxes work great because... They're pretty much free. Um, if you buy a pair of shoes, you get a shoe box or a cowboy boots, you get a shoe box or work boots, you know, on and on and on. So you pretty much have a free storage system. And they're not clear or anything, and they're cardboard, so they can slide under the bed. Um, you want to make sure you store your seeds in a dry, cool place. Um, that is very important. A lot of people store them in the freezer or the refrigerator. I store my loose seeds like okra, uh, peas, stuff like that in my... Uh, my crisper in my refrigerator and that seems to do okay for that this works great this is free but you it depends how big your garden is our garden is way too big for me to start to store stuff like this anymore the second way we started storing stuff is in these these clear plastic totes you guys have probably a million of these in your basement with christmas ornaments or child's toys or anything like that in it these work great um because they're cheap the lids generally snap on, and you can stack these up. These work great. The only thing I don't like about these, once again, these can slide under the bed, depending on how high your bed is. The only things I don't like about it is they are clear, and they tend to get hot if they get any kind of sun on them, if you don't store them correctly. Um, but they work great. What we, tr what we did this year is I use these style totes that I'm going to show you next in my garage. They're very stackable. I put... I buy the big 40, 50 quart ones, and I put like my circular saw, my jigsaw, um, a lot of my woodworking stuff in there because I do more metalworking in my garage than I do woodworking. So when I need something, I can just take the toad out. They're stackable. I open the lid. I grab them what I need. I put it back in, and it stores it. Keeps the spiders out, the mice, all kinds of stuff like that. It's these totes. You guys have seen these totes at Home Depot, Lowe's. Everybody's got them on sale right now uh, after Christmas because... 
Um, you can put all your Christmas ornaments in it. You can store your sweaters in your basement, and they all stack on top of each other. They work great. I like this style here because it's a heavier duty, heavier duty uh, box. This does not fit under my bed. So I have to put this in our closet, towards the back of the closet, um, and that's where it keeps it nice and cool. Or you can store them in your basement. That way you keep the water out of it so it's not so humid. Plus, it keeps the bugs out of it and the air out of it. That's the most important thing. But these lids snap pretty tight on there and they are very stackable. So let's check what we got out. Um, everything stays inside of here, which is great. And if something leaks, like if you forget to put a bag or zip a bag back up, or tape a bag back up and the seeds fall on the bottom. You can take these out and then dump your seeds out so you're not really wasting your seeds. Um, but that's how we store our seeds here. Um, not too much about it. Um, we're gonna go over, I've got a couple orders of seeds still out. My Johnny's order has shipped earlier this week and I just got a email from Baker Creek said my seeds ship today. So the next video we do next week will be on the seed varieties that we grow here and why we are growing these varieties. So I'm going to take you downstairs to the basement and I'm going to show you how we start our seeds. All right, guys, we are out in my covered back porch area. I know you guys have seen this area um, on a lot of my videos. I usually start here and go out the door. What this is, is this used to be an outside concreted porch area. Um, when my parents lived here, they closed this area in to make a back porch. So that way they could sit back here. My mom could put some of her house plants out here during the winter because it stays about 50 to 65 degrees in here. Um, it's got a lot of windows and uh, there's no heat out here at this time, but my mom did have a small little um, electric heater mounted on the wall. Um, but I use this for, I'm going to use this for my wash pack station this year and seed propagation right now. I'm currently going to move everything outside to the high tunnel when it gets warmer but it's just a little cold right now to be doing that kind of stuff so let me get this camera turned around and then i will show you what we're doing okay so right now all i've got out here it's a little bright all i've got out here is these generic picnic tables from walmart or lowe's or home depot i'm sure you guys have a hundred of these at your house that you use i use these for our farmer's market plus they also work great to do seed propagation on that's where i did my video the other day you can see i've got my seed starting trays here I've got my totes underneath the here that we put our soil mix in. Um, one's got cocoa core in it. I use those for my microgreens, and one actually has actually has a soil mix that I use for seed starts. And I will show you that right now. Um, what I use for soil mix is you can use all types that you can go anywhere, any store sells it pretty much now. It just depends on the quality or quantity that you need. I buy burger, um, I use this BM7 mix, and I also use this BM custom blend. Um, the, the difference is I buy these from my local nurseries. There's two nurseries that I buy from. I can get a bag of this BM7 here from my local nursery in one of our towns for $15 a bag, and that's three cubic feet for 15 bucks. I can go to Earl May's, buy the exact same style mix, but instead of being a bark mix, it has a special mix. Uh, it's like a custom blend. It's got more perlite and stuff. They sell this for $30. So I've been buying this because that's all I thought I could get here in this much of a bulk. Um, now that I know my local nursery sells this mix for $15, I'm going to start buying this. And what I do is I mix it with a container mix. This just happens to be Bacto. Um, this is what my nursery sells. It's in a 1.5 cubic feet bag. Uh, it's all natural. It's organic peat. Uh, it's got good drainage. It holds water. And it also has a starter and slow-release fertilizer in it. The reason why I chose this is, for one, the nursery carries this brand. And for two, when I talk to the nursery guy... I asked him what they started their starts in. He told me exactly. He said, if you want to know exactly what we do to start our starts here in our high... And they grow 30,000, 40,000 starts from flowers to vegetables every year and trees. He said, we take one bag of this BM7 bark mix, which is three cubic feet. One bag of this 1.5 cubic feet container mix. We mix it together and that's what we do for our starts. He said, that's God's honest truth. We don't use anything special. This is what we do, and it's the same thing we sell. So this is what this is. So usually, 
I'll try to buy like a container mix, like miracle Grow or something, and then try to spice it up a little bit with some warm castings or something. You're getting pretty much a lot of money if you start doing that. Um, something that'll keep the seeds fed uh, longer as I sell these starts. So this is what this mix looks like. You know, I have not added any water to this. This is straight out of the bag with this bark. It hold, what you want is a good mix that's not soaking wet, but you want one that holds together good. This is perfect. And it's got a little bit of fertilized, slow-release fertilizer in it. And this has been in this tote for a week now. Uh, actually, a little bit over a week. Um, all I do is I poke holes in the top just to keep uh, airflow in it and to keep it from condensating and getting wet. So that's the seed propagation part. Let's go downstairs and I will show you. We've actually got some basil, uh, red and white onions, and some cilantro. As you can see, I've got a corner of our basement. Um, it's not heated or cooled downstairs here. It's just a basement. and it, um, So I do have one of these black cheap plastic racks. I bought this last year when I started propagating our own seeds on a, on a big level. You can see I can hold two, four, six, eight, um, ten if you want to do the top, but then you got to figure out what to do with your lights. So I use just the middle three, so I can do six trays at a time. I have heat mats underneath of them with thermostats, as you can see. Everything's staying about 65, 66 degrees. I've got it set at 70. Um, and you can see it does its job. Um, let's take a look at some stuff. Here's the cilantro. As you can see, it's starting to pop up a little bit. That These, these have only been under here for three days. Um, there's my onions. And then there should be, this should be some white onions. See, look at those white onions. Those look awesome. And then this should be my basil. My basil looks great. I've got Italian sweet basil. And then I've got some lavender basil in the last three rows there. If you guys watched my earlier videos from this past summer, you'll see the, the basil that we grow, the Italian basil. Those are seeds from it. And also the lavender basil are seeds from it. Um, pretty cheap rack. I think this rack cost me like 40 bucks at Menards. Um, pretty good, sturdy rack, very easy to move by yourself or take apart or add to. You can make it as high or as short as you want. Does okay. Um, I'm going to go with a couple different styles of racks this year to try to increase my, uh, my demand here. Um, I need to start probably about 20 trays at a time. Uh, to make sure I have enough starts to sell and start propagating the green or high tunnel um, this year. And then I only do six trays of microgreens. So this works perfect. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this from a microgreen tray. I'm going to buy some of those bigger racks and I'm going to use those to do seed propagation and put the big heat mats underneath of them. Um, they're a little pricey, but we got stimulus money coming. And what's the best way to use your stimulus money? buy gardening supplies. That's what I say anyway. And my wife will tell you something else, but gardening supplies. Um, so when it comes to lighting, as you can see, this is just cheap LED daylight bulb lighting. Um, a lot of people get tied into lighting as, God, I got to have these $100 grow lights and blah, blah, blah. You, you can, by all means, they work phenomenal. They work great because that's what they are. You can get away with starting your seeds with just lights. You can use the bulb, like the T5s, T12s, T8s. They get really hot. I have some of those, and I quit using those. I've got a stack of them over there. I use these LED ones. As you can see, I've got a rack here, that uh, a table here that I've got a couple lights set up on some PVC pieces, some extra piping. I collect a lot of piping for plumbing, and I use them for irrigation outside. So I use the spare pieces. Just made kind of a, a little get-together rack here just to hold my lights. As you can see, I could pull... There is plenty of light here, I think. So each one of these lights is 3,500 lumens. So that's, what, 7,000 lumens of light on three seed starting trays right here. Um, that works out great. They don't get hot. I mean, you guys have worked with these LED lights. And the best thing is, each one of those lights is under $14. Or the same way, these are 2,500 lumen lights here. And I put two. Per, per rack, I just zip tie them to the top and use the chains that come with them. That way I could pick this light up or down. So you can see I could pick this light up as the seeds grow or I could push them down. Um, those lights were like $13 at Menards a piece.
but I've got some also some other lights that I've purchased from Home Depot. Um, they were only $9 a piece. I have not tried them yet. As you can see, they're still in the box. I really don't have any place to put them down here, but I couldn't resist at nine bucks. So they'll go on some other racks. But guys, this is what we use down here to do our seed propagation. And uh, everything seems to work out good. I mean, you can make this as expensive or as cheap as you want. You don't even have to do anything like that. You can basically just have a table sitting in front of a, a window sill with some sunshine on it. And you can do the same thing. Just make sure you use the humidity domes when you do this because that can... Um, makes like a baby greenhouse and it heats the soil up and keeps the soil wet so that way the seeds will germinate. got for you guys today, um, pretty short and sweet. Hopefully this helped you guys out or answered any questions. By means, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Otherwise, you guys have a great weekend, have a great day, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks guys, bye. Won't you call me?